Knicks Nation, today is Tuesday, May 28, 2024. I hope you had a really good Memorial Day weekend. I hope you're safe and healthy and that your family is safe and healthy and enjoy their Memorial Day weekend as well. Speaking of health, blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field along with the first responders who every day are out here saving lives. Those also that pick up garbage for us to keep our places clean and those that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on the many women that are out here trying to help rescue, deliver, and recover teenagers and children that are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. People that are also victims of prostitution and child prostitution, pornography, child pornography, human trafficking, and sex slavery. Double curses on the perpetrators of these things and those that profit from these things and the perverts that create the demands for these things. Finally, double blessings upon those that are homeless. Nearly 600,000 men, women, children, veterans, families, living in the streets of the United States of America, and millions of people around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them for theirs is the kingdom. A couple of things that I want to start off with. First of all, um, it was good news to hear that uh, Julius Randle is going well with his recovery post-surgery on his shoulder. And again, it looks like he'll be ready for training camp. And that's very big news for the Knicks because uh, when you have him with OG Ananobi, the Knicks are really formidable, uh, which also why <clears throat> every time we talk about, like yesterday's video talked about McCall Bridges, I always say the Knicks really don't need to do anything. We're in pretty good shape uh, as it is, and uh, Julius' health also helps with that. Now, uh, also, I wanted to uh, mention that rest in peace to Bill Walton, who one of the greatest basketball players to ever play the games. Definitely one of the greatest college players, most talented college players to ever play in college basketball. And won two chips in the pros. One with Portland, the other one with Larry Bird in Boston as a sixth man. Uh, you know, he was Big Redhead was a really, really dynamic player. And not only that, uh, during the course of time going through the Vietnam War, the United States was and all the things that went on at the late 60s and early 70s. He was really an outspoken voice uh, for what was right and always been a really uh, good character guy, as well as very knowledgeable of how to play basketball the right way. So rest in peace to Bill Walton and condolences to the Walton family. Now, uh, today I want to talk about Goodwill Hunting. In fact, that's the title of the video today, Goodwill Hunting. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, when my wife and I first got married, we we had a young family. Uh, we were me, my wife, and four children. And my wife was a home stay-at-home mom, and it was very difficult for us financially. So what we used to do is go to the Goodwill, and we'd look for clothes for all of us from the Goodwill. Me, my wife, kids, everybody from Goodwill. And we lived in Connecticut at the time, so we'd go to, we call it Goodwill hunting. We'd map out the Goodwills all through the state where we would drive. And then we'd make a Sunday out of it and just go to all of them and see what we could find. Usually we'd find some good stuff. Now, sometimes you go to Goodwill. Goodwill is, of course, where people cast off clothes and things and items that they don't need anymore. So sometimes we found some really good stuff. Like one time I found a nice suit. It was green and it was, and it was perfect, fit me perfectly, well tailored. Uh, I think I found it in Fairfield County, Connecticut, one of the richer areas of Connecticut. It was $19. That suit would have cost $400 brand new. And with it, I found a bag from Ralph Lauren, a suit bag to carry the suit in. Got that for $10. So sometimes you could get stuff like that. Most of the time, though, you're getting stuff you could wear for a little while, maybe if it fits, and then cast it away again. Or you, most of the time, you're going to leave most of the stuff you see right there in the store because you didn't find anything. Well, why do I mention that? That's what it's like to scout basketball players for the second round. <laughs> that's what it's like, goodwill hunting. You're looking for something that's maybe a diamond in the rough. Maybe you find a Jokic, a Joker there, or a, uh, you might find a Jalen Brunson, right? That's very rare that you find a player of all NBA or MVP calendar ca uh, it, ca uh, capability in the second round. But you're still looking. You might find that. It's very rare, though. Or you might find a Mitchell Robinson or a Deuce McBride in the second round, 
right? And so you that's what you're looking for. Most of the time, though, there's nothing there, okay? And, and you'll find all kind of things. Everybody has a blemish. You know, most players coming into the league, even first-round players, have blemishes. But the blemishes are bigger when you're looking in the second round. So sometimes you're looking for a guy that, you know, in the second round, maybe like a Jalen Tyson that falls into the second round that might have been a first round pick and you take a closer look at him and there's a reason they fall as well. So example, like speaking of Jalen Tyson, great footwork, great footwork. I don't think he has the explosiveness or the athleticism to get his offensive game off in the NBA. And because he doesn't have that NBA level athleticism, at least what I saw, I don't know if he could play any defense in the NBA. But if you're watching his videos, his footwork is almost perfect. He's got great footwork, but he's a wing player. So that's a risk that you see what I mean? That's a risk you might take. Or Edie. Everybody's high on Edie. Edie's got skills. Edie's big. You can't teach seven foot four. You can't teach seven foot wingspan. But the dude is slow as molasses and we don't know about his motor. Then there's guys like Oso Igudaro. Great motor. Great passing skills. Great defense. Can't shoot. Right? Can't shoot. Same with Ryan Dunn. Great motor. Great defense. Can't shoot. So there's some blemishes with all of these guys. And, and the Dom has been pretty skilled at finding guys in the second round. Again, you're talking about a Deuce McBride. They got Jericho Sims in the second round. Ro- Joko Roko Bites they got in the second round. They got good talent in the second round. They've been pretty good about finding And even the first round talent that the Don has drafted, he trades down. Emmanuel quickly, he trades down. To get that. He doesn't pay full price for it. He trades down to get it. Okay. So that is why. You know this year is particularly more difficult to me. Because it's hard to find stuff man. It's not easy to find something in the second round. So um, I to, to me the top of my draft board. Right now is, is Deron Holmes the second. And he's a first round pick. And I would, you know, I know he's going to be like in the area that the Knicks pick and knowing the Don, he might even try to get him lower. But Deron Holmes is my number one pick for the Knicks. Uh, late second, late first rounder. It's followed by Khalil Ware. After that, it gets murky. I would not pick Ryan Dunn in the first round. I would not pick Jalen Tyson in the first round. Um, I looked at Kevin McCollar. No. <laughs> Zach Eady, seven foot four, you know, 24 years old, but I don't know about his motor. Maybe there's risk with all of these guys. And I don't know who the hell think we're going to pick a point guard. We got a point guard. Okay. And and only ones that want to pick a point guard are down on Deuce. Like they want you to pick a center because they down on Mitch Rob. I ignore these people because they make no sense to me. I'm leaving them alone. But, and then like a Baylor Shireman. Nice, well-rounded game. Slow. Slow. <laughs> I don't know if he can get his, off, his game off in the league. That's what I'm saying. Maybe he can. That's the risk you're taking. And so with the Don, he's going to look at these guys, and he's going to, you know what's going to happen is, you're going to see a lot of undrafted free agents in the next camp. You're going to see a lot of them. You're going to see, you may see them on their summer league team, okay? Um yeah, and you don't just pick a guy because of his name, like Bronny James. For what? You want to waste his time and your time? So that it's very difficult. So what we're doing is we're goodwill hunting. Like I said, to me, the top of my draft board for the Knicks, where they're picking, is Deron Holmes. Um, I might look at Killy Aware because he's got talent. There's no denying he's got NBA talent. That's one of the first things you want to look at. See, what I've mentioned so far, Baylor Shireman. Um, uh, let's see, Zach Eady, um, Keyshawn George. Can they get their game off in the league? The league is faster. It's more athletic. It's stronger. It's quicker. It's smarter. And they exploit you. They exploit your weaknesses in the league. Okay, Weaknesses that may not show up too strong in college. We'll show up very strong with NBA competition. 
And I'm not even talking about summer league competition. I'm talking about the league. And so you got to really decide that as a scout and as an organization, do you want to take a risk on any of these guys? So the Don is low risk. He's low risk. Okay. So Quentin Grimes, first round, but he traded down. People didn't understand what he was doing, tripping about Kai Jones because he drafted him, traded him. The idea was to trade down and get the same guy that you want, but get him cheaper. See, that's what you're doing. That's what he's going to do. He ain't changed. He's going to do the same thing. So he's looking at lower risk. Again, I like Deron Holmes two years from now. I can see him being groomed to be in Julius Randle's spot two years from now, right? That I like him. Um, like I said, Ryan Dunn can't shoot. Jason Ty- Jalen Tyson got game. Nice footwork. Beautiful footwork. But I don't know if he can play NBA level defense. Okay, that, that's problem number one. He's six seven, um, so he's a wing, but that don't mean he could play wing in the league. I don't know if he's fast enough, athletic enough to play wing in the league. That's my problem with him. It was a, like there was a guy out of Wisconsin. I forgot. It was like two years ago. Everybody, several of you was just tripping about this kid, and I didn't think he could get his game off in the league. And as it turns out, he got drafted by the Washington Wizards, and he can't play because he can't get his game off in the league. This ain't college. This is the league, okay? And he was drafted in the lottery. I forgot the boy's name. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. But you got to get somebody that can play in the league. Keyshawn, Keyshawn, Keyshawn Jones, George, 6'8", nice size, freshman. So there's upside. Um, that's a possibility. They got him listed at 31 on Tankathon. I would probably want to get him later if I could. Um, that That's a possibility. You know, he could play two or the three, a wing type guy. But I don't know. See, again, this is, you know, to me, Deron Holmes, I would look at Oso Iguodar because he's later second round. He ain't going to cost you a lot. And you could really use his motor, his defense, his passing. He's not going to shoot. But he what he's, what, six almost 6'11". Six, but he could play the power forward or the five. He'll defend. He plays very high IQ. Second round ain't going to cost you nothing. Um, to get somebody like that. So that that's why I'm high on him. Um, a guy like Baylor, I'm very weary of wings that are not athletic or fast enough to play in the league. Okay, everybody wants wings. But there's a reason these guys are falling into the second round. Okay, they, like Baylor Shireman, 6'7", almost 6'8", 6'7 and a half. He's going to be 24, first of all. He's, you know, when you're 24 and you're still in college and you're not dominating and you're falling into the second round, you're 24. There's not much upside left. That's the problem there. Not much upside left. Okay. And so um, you're probably seeing the best of him in college, which means it can only go downhill when he plays against NBA competition. See, now maybe I'm wrong, but you, you got to weigh the percentages as close to your favor as possible, which means you got to be conservative. A lot of guys say, well, let's just roll the dice. NBA teams pay too much money to roll the dice. That's a stupid concept. If you're if you're an NBA general manager, you ain't got time to roll the dice. You got to make those percentages in your favor as much as possible. So that's why you might go for a guy like that if he's undrafted and let him come into camp and see what he could do. That ain't costing you nothing. But you ain't going to pick him and have to pay him money or, or have to cut him because he don't make the league. You're not going to waste a pick on him. Okay. Deron Holmes, pretty safe bet. He's, he's an NBA player. Khalil, Khalil Weir, he's an NBA player. But we're not picking two guys in the first round. Okay, we're picking one. And those are the two best players at that area of the draft. Uh, Tyler Kolek at a Marquette, we're not picking no point guards. They ain't going to play. We still don't got room to Joko Bidas to play. And you're talking about some people talking about point guards. They had these idiots here on Tankathon. They had, they had the Knicks picking a point guard. Like, what, what, what are you looking at? Do you know our team? Because you, why? You know what I'm saying? So that's not going to happen. Ty, Terrence Shannon Jr., 6'7", uh, 20, almost 24 years old. 24? No. 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 And, and Johnny Furphy, I'm not even sure he's an NBA player. Okay? I did see him. I'm not sure he's an NBA player. Some people, you got to look at this guy. No. No. There was another guy. I think his name is Isaac Crawford. Oh, you got to look at him. Dude had two ACL surgeries in college. He's twenty, going to be 23, 24. Okay? Listen, if his knees cannot hold up in college, 
You think they're going to hold up in the league? Look at Harry, J Harry Giles. Remember Harry Giles? Some of y'all, I don't know. So, <laughs> like I said, to me, second round, I'm looking at Osu Iguodaro, low risk, not much, don't cost you much. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm looking at him. Dylan Jones ain't tall enough, 6'6". Six, six. We got enough guys ain't tall enough. Ryan Dunn is a possibility um, because of his defense. He does play NBA-level defense. He has an NBA-level motor, there's no doubt. But as a wing player, you need a little bit of shooting. You ain't got to have... You ain't got to be Stephen Curry on the wing, but you need a little bit of shooting. You got to shoot a little bit more than 20% from three. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about him either. See? So, and, and again, he's 22, going to be 23, you know, this year. Uh, I don't know. See, that's what I'm saying. He got to wait two years anyway. So to me, the guy, like I said, I keep mentioning um, Deron, Deron Holmes, because Deron Holmes, 21, going to be 22. And in this game, that's a big difference. He could wait two years, be 24. He could develop. I like his game. Um, NBA level physical ability. So I'm, I like that, you know, but other than that, I don't see much here. It's goodwill hunting time and ain't much in the store. Y'all I'm just telling you. Ain't much in the store. I'm trying to say that, you know, forget all point guards. And if you not got enough athletic ability at the wing spot, forget that too. Right? So we're looking at fours. Fives we got covered, but Khalil Ware is good enough that you might want to take a risk on him in terms of not really a fly, but he's he's a talent. But then you have to cut Jericho Sims. That's what you're doing. You're cutting Jericho Sims if you draft Khalil Ware. Okay? And he's going to wait two years. He's going to sit on the bench. He's going to play sometime, but he's going to develop slowly. But that's fine. You know, that's what you're doing. Um, if you want to keep Jericho, forget Khalil. You can't have both of them. You got to be real. Some of y'all be trying to stack the deck like the Knicks. I get every great player and stack them all up, and they're all going to sit on your bench for you. Don't work like that in the league. Okay, everybody wants to play. And then the Tibbs only plays nine. Some of y'all still tripping. Think he's going to pick ten. He ain't picking ten. He plays nine. And then when you get to the playoffs, he plays eight. So, yeah, I, I'm looking in here. I don't see much here, y'all. I'm just telling you. Um, the kid, Comch Ehrlich, he's, you know, he's 18, he's 6'11", almost 7 feet tall. Undrafted free agent. Let's see what he got. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Um, I, I don't see much here. There's just not much here, y'all. So, I'm looking at, like I said, Osu Ikadaro. I look, I like him. Uh, I, I'll be surprised. I want to see who the Knicks pick. I think they're going to trade these picks and try to get something later. You know, they probably, like I said, I'd like them to take the round home, trade the other first round pick, maybe trade the second round pick, get some undrafted free agents, see what you get. Because that's what we have here. We goodwill hunting. Y'all enjoy your Tuesday. Shalom.